welcome aboard the USS Estes. As you may or may not know, the Estes here is the command ship of Joint Task Force 132. We have minutes to go before the first blast, Mike shot, of Operation Island. Uh, 59 minutes now, to be exact. We've been here since daybreak. Let we talk last night during the early morning hours. Now, as you can imagine, feeling is running pretty high about now, and there's reason for it. If everything goes according to plan, we'll soon see the largest explosion ever set off on the face of the Earth. You have a grandstand seat here to one of the most momentous events in the history of science. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. For the sake of all of us, and for the sake of our country, I know that you join me in wishing this expedition well. It is now 30 seconds to zero time. Put on goggles or turn away. Do not remove goggles or face first until 10 seconds after the first light. What you have just seen was an awesome turning point in history, a development affecting not only the future of humanity, but the security of our nation, the safety of our communities, and the well-being of our homes and our families. President Eisenhower was speaking, not alone to the United Nations, but to every American when he said, and I quote, let no one think that the expenditure of vast sums for weapons and systems of defense can guarantee the absolute safety for the cities and citizens of any nation. The awful arithmetic of the atomic bomb does not permit of any such easy solution. Even against the most powerful defense, an aggressor in possession of the effective minimum number of bombs for a surprise attack could probably place a sufficient number of his bombs on the chosen targets to cause hideous damage. End of the quote. Consequently, our national civil defense effort must concern itself with three major factors. One, intensified civil defense preparations to reduce the loss of life 
property and production. Two, greater personal preparations for your recovery and for that of your family. Three, our moral determination to fight back and to win if war should come even in spite of our efforts for peace. In light of the picture which you have just seen, I ask you to ponder these concerns in your heart and in your conscience as a responsible American citizen. Two courses of action must be followed on the long and difficult road to peace. First, unceasing efforts to reach international agreement upon such a sound proposal as President Eisenhower made to the United Nations for the constructive use of atomic energy in the service of all mankind. This requires better and deeper understanding of the problems it faces upon the part of the American public. Second, prudence dictates steadfast preparation by us at home to back up our president as he goes into the councils of the world in order that he may lead from strength, strength based upon an assurance that the American people are prepared to withstand any assault. This is no simple thing to do. It requires personal dedication and diligence in civil defense as a safeguard until that day when a just and lasting peace may come to the world. This we can do. This we must and we will do as Americans determined to protect and advance America and free people everywhere.